The process by which a polypeptide folds into its final three-dimensional structure is very complex and very intricate. Now what happens if that polypeptide that initially begins with the correct primary sequence, what happens if it folds incorrectly? So normally if it folds incorrectly that means the final three-dimensional structure of that polypeptide will not be correct. And because it's the three-dimensional structure of the polypeptide that determines what the function of that polypeptide is, the function of that final misfolded protein will not be the same. And usually these types of misfolded proteins are biologically inactive. And what that means is our cells will either denature and break down these proteins or refold them into the correct structure. Now, in some very rare cases, these misfolded proteins can actually form these biological molecules we call prions, and prions are very, very dangerous molecules, as we'll see in just a moment. Prions are these infectious agents that can actually cause a variety of different types of diseases, not only in humans, but also in other animals. For example, mad cow disease in cattle and screepy in sheep is caused by these prion molecules. In fact, in humans, a disease known as Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, which is a deadly disease, is called by prion molecules. So, what exactly is a prion and what are some properties of prions? Well, prions are these aggregate, these collection of proteins which normally exist in our body but which have misfolded and because they misfolded they form these insoluble aggregates. And so what that means is because they're insoluble, there is no way our cells of the body can actually break them down and denature them by the same method as it normally does and because our cells cannot break them down, eventually the aggregate proteins will somehow cause the death of the cell, killing off the cells of our body and eventually that individual. So to gain some insight into how prions actually function, let's take a look at the following molecule, the following protein that normally exists in the brain cells of our body, in our neurons, in the brain. So PRP, as shown in the following diagram, is a normal protein that is found in the brain. And under certain conditions, for example, if some type of mutation takes place, this protein can actually misfold into this protein known as PRPSC. Now, what's the major difference between this protein here and this protein here? Well, one major difference is the fact that this protein consists predominantly of alpha helices, but in this case, it consists predominantly, it has a very high content of beta pleated sheets. So when this misfolding process takes place, instead of forming all these alpha helixes, we form these beta pleated sheets. Now, what's the big deal about beta pleated sheets? Well, because we have a high content of beta pleated sheets, these molecules will have a high potential, will have a high propensity of binding to other molecules that also contain beta pleated sheets. Why is that? Well, recall that the structure of the beta pleated sheet consists of these linear polymers of amino acid. So we have one linear polymer of amino acid, a second linear polymer stacked on top of one another, a third one stacked on top, uh, stacked on top of that, and so forth. So these beta pleated sheets consist of these linear polymers stacked on top of one another. And because they're stacked on top and they're linear, they're parallel with respect to each other, they will have a great potential of bonding to other beta pleated sheets via non-covalent bonds. So, Recall that beta pleated sheets have a high propensity, high potential for forming bonds with other beta pleated sheets. Therefore, the beta pleated sheets of one protein can interact with the beta sheets of another protein and that can form these aggregate molecules. So if this protein that normally appears in the brain cells of our body transforms, misfolds into this protein, it can basically form aggregates with other proteins and that will eventually form even larger fibers as we'll see in just a moment. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. 
let's suppose some type of mutation took place or some type of uh, event happened that eventually led to the formation of these molecules. So we have, let's say, three of these misfolded proteins. Now, because they consist predominantly of these blue beta pleated sheets, they are drawn in blue. Now, because of, the, uh, because of the presence of these beta pleated sheets, they will bond with each other as a result of those beta, uh, beta pleated sheets being attracted to one another via non-covalent bonds. And so eventually, we form this multi-unit and aggregate of three PRPSC molecules. Now let's suppose we have these red molecules in close, in close proximity that are normal. Now somehow by mechanism that we are still unsure of, these uh, infected molecules, these misfolded proteins can somehow transform these normal proteins into these abnormal proteins and so these will bind to our multi-unit aggregate transforming these into the blue ones and eventually we form this fibro-like protein we call an amyloid fiber. So these are known as amyloid fibers. Now eventually they form e even larger aggregates and eventually these aggregates because they cannot be broken down by the cells of our body by the same exact methods will basically affect the efficiency and uh, the efficiency and the different types of functions that take place in our cells and the cells in this case are the brain cells, the nerve cells found inside our brain so eventually that will kill off many nerve cells in our brain. In fact, if we examine the brain of an individual that has Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, we'll see that the brain will resemble a sponge in the sense that it will contain many holes because those holes are a result of the fact that many nerve cells have died because these aggregates have killed off those cells. So in the case of CJD, uh, these proteins end up killing off many of the nerve cells which eventually degenerates the mental capability and the brain function of that particular individual. And patients with these conditions develop a sponge-like brain that basically resembles a sponge in the sense that it contains many holes and those holes come from the fact that these aggregate molecules kill off the different types of cells, different types of nerve cells inside our brain. So we see that usually the misfolding of a protein doesn't actually do much because our body is capable of denaturing and breaking down that misfolded protein or folding it correctly into that correct shape. But sometimes we get something called a prion and these are very, very dangerous infectious agents. So up until recently, we thought that only bacterial cells and viruses are capable of infecting our bodies and the bodies of other animals. But now we know that these aggregate of misfolded proteins known as prions can, only, can also act as infectious agents. They can easily be passed down from one individual to another and even from one organism to another. As we saw the case was with those people, those individuals that that ate beef that came from cows that had mad cow disease. So basically those prions were passed down to those individuals via the beef because the beef contained those prions in the cells.